Good morning, everyone. I hope uh, this day finds you well. And uh, I'm outside here. It's a little cool. Got some breeze going on, but uh, I couldn't resist uh, the beautiful sky um, and the sun. Uh, just excited me. So I uh, have my coffee. I hope you have yours. And I wanted to share with you the psalm for this Sunday. This psalm is uh, Psalm 16. So let me read this to you and just listen for the hope, the promise, the, the, <laughs> the resurrection in this uh, psalm. It starts out, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who chose another God multiply their sorrows, their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure for you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit you show me the path of life in your presence here is a fullness of joy in your right hand are pleasures forevermore <clears throat> so this Psalm 16 is said to be classified by many psalmists as an individual lament psalm where one of us where we one cries out to God in the midst of maybe a perilous or even life-threatening situation and not mo and now most of us can shift our thoughts away from such times in this world can we not because we've been pretty blessed blessed beyond measure for the wonderful life of freedom and goodwill that I think we have all experienced in this land. But the psalm is our psalm for this upcoming Sunday. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the New Testament reading from Acts, where Peter uh, recites in verses 8, and 8 through 11 of this psalm in his address to the people who uh, kind, of, kind of gathered around to hear about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, um, which then links this psalm to that resurrection event. Oh, coffee is good. But as a lament psalm, I think Psalm 16 is kind of missing some of the components. Um, it's missing a complaint, or it's missing a real cry out with the little exception of verses 1 and 4 where the psalmist says, protect me. And then on verse 4 it goes on with, those who choose another God multiply their sorrows, their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. So the preponderance of the rest of the psalm is all about trust and praise. For this psalmist has chosen the Lord, the one true God of Israel, as the God who is ever present. Now, Peter speaks words of confidence in Acts uh, chapter 2, ver primarily verses 25 to 28, by quoting this psalm, some of our Psalm 16, reassuring the crowd, the crowd that were gathered around him, that God, even though Jesus is no longer with them, that God is present. He's not abandoned them. He's given them words of hope through this psalm to this very confused, and think about it, very fearful crowd. I'm not sure that the or what the next step is in life 
for them, but Peter reassures them that they could and would indeed dwell with God throughout. The psalmist is able to articulate, I think, what trusting God can do for both the spirit as well as our bodies. A relief that resonates in the fullness of one's being. People of God, think about it today. Today, we live in a time that none of us have ever experienced, right? By any one of us um, that we have ever experienced such a thing, this coronavirus pandemic, and I don't want to belabor on that, but this brings about within us fears, and it brings about within us uncertainties. But through Psalm 16, we too must trust must trust in that promise of our God. For our God is a God of resurrection. A God who has overcome death for us through Jesus Christ. And for this, we shall not be moved from the foundation that was established for us on Easter morning. Amen. Now let us pray. Lord God, as we come to you this glorious day, help us be reminded of the promises made by you to us through Jesus Christ. The promises that we so embrace in our hearts but sometimes lack in trust through our minds. That promise of resurrection, that promise of everlasting life, given through your Son who overcame death for us all. Guide us through this day and forevermore, knowing that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings to you this day. I hope you have a glorious one. I will have uh, my uh, virtual office hour this afternoon at 1 o'clock, so please feel free to call in and join me. If you don't have that information, reach out to me, and I will uh, make sure that you are, you are tied in. So blessings to you all. Bye-bye.